Okay, stand by one second or two. Okay, Robbie, you want to let them in? I'm going mute. <laughs> okay, uh, we're having a problem here, so just hang on a second. It met all. Okay, here they come. Okay, stand by. Well, welcome everybody to the 24th and final uh, <laughs> session of our Fly by the Seat of Our Pants uh, Bird Festival. I don't know if you were counting, but I think there's at least 24 of these programs and they've all been recorded and will be uh, up available on the website. Most of them are already available and uh, except today's, of course, we'll get those, uh, we'll do those through the middle of the night and try to have them up tomorrow. Uh, so we are so happy to have you uh, join us and tonight our final speaker is our local Claudia is going to talk to us about shorebirds and we will get to that in just a bit just a minute uh, I haven't had an update on the final donations but for those of you who can thank you for your donations uh, Bob if you could put that front slide up again if you want to make a donation you can do it several different ways uh, bottom left you can go find a checkbook and an envelope and a stamp and actually mail it. That's, that's maybe the hardest way. Or you could go online and donate on the bottom right uh, there to the uh, Morro Bay Bird Festival. Or you could hold your phone up there to the uh, Venmo or PayPal QR code and donate directly through there. Uh, again, we are recording this, so, so don't make any funny faces. Mm -hmm. I know this is the last one and I might be tempted, uh, but, but none of you can do that, okay? No funny faces because we are recording. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, all the speakers and participants for your generosity and your time and your expertise. It's been a good time. I feel a little bit like a uh, like a TV host or something. Uh, Bob is behind saying, OK, three, two, one, ready, record. And then we go and we do it all again. So we've been having fun. Uh, we're going to probably sleep all day tomorrow, but we've been having fun and we're glad that you're joining us. Now, tonight we have. Uh, Claudia Freitas, and she's going to uh, show us a little bit about um, uh, shorebirds. Uh, she loves showing people about how much fun birding is, and she just in general maintains a light heart to look at the world around us. She has, uh, she has been and still is a volunteer for the Morro Bay Natural History Museum. She's taught for Elder Hostel, um, which is now called Road Scholar, and in her before life, uh, she was a biology professor. She taught zoology, wildlife, marine bio, and a variety of natural history subjects. And she taught at the El Dorado Nature Center, Long Beach Parks and Rec. And she's been lucky enough to lead nature trips for a variety of agencies in places like India, Peru, Ecuador, Brazil, Argentina, Costa Rica, Egypt, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, and Botswana. But normally she hangs out in Morro Bay. Damn, she, she hangs out in Morro Bay and, and, and looks at shorebirds. So, um, Claudia, uh, you know, we, we're saving the best for last. So it's all up to you to, to, to bring this one home. Talk to us about shorebirds. And, uh, and I'm going to uh, punch out here and uh, leave it to you. Okay. So we're going to talk about shorebirds. Um, and... There's 214 different species of show, sure, yeah, I can't talk, sorry, shorebirds. And we're not gonna do all of them. We're gonna do the ones that are local to my area, which is near Morro Bay. Um, one of the things I wanted to share with you um, is the fact that, um, oops, something's going on here, sorry. Um, when I, I really push for people to use their field guides. I know you all have, a, oops, I disappeared. Why did I? 
Oh, I disappeared for a while. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, you all have a field guide, I imagine. Most birders do. And I use my field guide a lot and I make notes in my field guide. I know this is looking crazy, isn't it? Um, but I have scribbled all kinds of things I've learned. Can you read that? Anyway, it says direct scratching. Sandpipers and stuff scratch directly. Um, plovers scratch over their wings. And I have all kinds of little notes that really help me when I'm in the field. Um, so let's talk about the shorebirds. They're usually smaller wading birds and most people think of plovers and sandpipers when we do this. And you look out there and they're all brown and gray and there's a bunch of them and it's difficult for beginners to kind of get a grip on it. We have um, in our local area, we have about five species of plovers and 20 sandpiper species. And then we have an occasional vagrant that comes in. The thing is that all of these birds are migratory and they show two plumages. So you have to keep that in mind. And some of them are the world's greatest migrants flying thousands of miles back and forth from breeding to non-breeding area. They are protected by federal law. And uh, at one time they were hunted for food. So it's a good thing they're protected now. Oops. Um, so what are the adaptations? Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead. What are the adaptations? What are the ways that shorebirds feed? Um, when you look at them, what do you see that's different in their bills and their legs and their eyes? And also if you're at the beach or at the marsh, whatever, Notice how they position themselves along the shore. Some will be out wading in the water. Others will be standing on the dry mud or dry sand and others will be right within an inch or two of the tide line. So where they position themselves is a telling factor. And what do we use to identify them? Well, first of all, shape. Shape is very important and then size, and then behavior. And then finally, after that, color pattern and also habitat. So all of those things are important and we're gonna talk about each, each one a little bit. So it can be intimidating. I know when you see a bunch of shorebirds in an area, and this, this is a small group here, but um, the thing that you need to do is pick one bird to look at. So choose a bird, Note the shape of the bird and size comparisons to the birds around it. There are three different species in this photo. I'm sure you knew that. Um, and look closely at the one bird you've picked. And I like to say, start at the end of the bill, go up over the top of the head, go to the back. Oh, here's one that's complete. complete. Start at the end of the bill, go up over the back, back to the neck, down to the tail, and then go back to the bill and go on the underneath and looking for any markings, distinguishing markings and, and leg color. So that those are important things. Most important is look at the proportions because you can't always judge size in the field. You look out there and it's, is that a seven inch bird or is that an eight and a half inch bird? You know, it's very difficult in the field to tell that. So what we look at are proportions and some of the important proportions that are really important is the length of the bill to the length of the head. Does it have a long bill? Does it have a short bill, shorter than the head? Is the bill three times the head length? What is it? What's the proportion? And then, we want to look at the neck length to the body depth. Does it have a short neck? Does it have a long neck? Comparison to its body depth. And then we're going to look at the body depth in comparison to the length of the legs. So are the legs short? Are the legs long? What are they? So it's all a matter of proportions to start telling them apart. It's very important. Um, birders often talk about jizz, general impression, size, and shape. And you've probably heard that all before, but it is true. 
there is that feeling of just, oh yeah, that's a hawk. Oh yeah, that's a hummingbird. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a large showy shorebird. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at these shorebirds and you're gonna say, are they large and showy? Oops, sorry. Are they large and showy? Are they uh, long build? Which way does the bill go? Are they long straight build? Are they in the water? Are they running? Are they short, stocky? They have really short little bills, very short and stocky with little bills. All of those things are important. Is it bobbing its tail? Is it running back and forth? What's it doing? So first of all, large and showy, those are easy. These are the ones that most people recognize right off. No others look like that. And as uh, Roger, Tor Roger Tory Peterson said, field marks are the trademarks of nature. So you get a bird like the black necked stilt. You get a bird like the black oyster catcher and the American avocet. Beautiful, beautiful patterns, colorful. Not, if it's not, large and showy, then it's probably a plover or a sandpiper. And the big difference between the two, jeez, oh I'm so sorry. The big difference between the two is the body shape. The body shape, um, I'm gonna see if I can do this. The body shape on a plover is short and round and the bill is usually shorter than the head depth. On a sandpiper, the body's maybe not quite so compact, but more importantly, the bill is longer than the head length usually. So the plovers have pigeon-like bills and the <clears throat> sandpipers tend to have longer bills of various shapes. Sanderlings run. Spotted sandpipers bob their tails up and down. Um, phalaropes swim. Um, if it spins in a circle on the water, it's Wilson's phalarope. Is it long and slender like a, a supermodel? There's probably a yellow legs. Is it really squat with no neck and a, and a very different looking bill? It's a turnstone. So those are some of the things you're gonna be looking for. And again, jizz general impression, size, and shape. And we're gonna start with the plovers because there's less of them. So we've already said they're plump, short-necked, bill length shorter than the head. And the other thing about plovers is they have big eyes and they look for their food. So they'll stop and look and then run over and pick something up and stop and look and run over and pick something up. And that's very, very typical of plover behavior. So our largest plover that we get is the black bellied plover. And it's about oh, 10 to 13 inches in size, just to give you an idea. Um, this is the way they look when they come to Morro Bay. Some things to recognize, this is why it's called a black bellied plover. This one is molting. That is not a plover back here. They have a very steep forehead. It's quite noticeable really. And they also have a hunched appearance. And that's um, very, very typical. Um, it's a large plover. Notice the bill is shorter than the head. Very important. And when they fly, they have black axillaries, black wing pits. So when you look up into the sky and a flock goes by, you'll see those black wing pits on the black belly plover. The next down in size, about nine to 11 inches is the killdeer. And it's almost instantly recognizable by the two black neck rings. But again, look at large eyes, bill shorter than the head, relatively stocky body. These guys do have longer legs <clears throat> and um, um, they're common inland 
not only at the shore, but also in fields and um, far away from the ocean. One of the things they're famous for is doing a broken wing act because they nest on the ground. If something is coming near their nest, both parents or either parent will do this broken wing in imitation to try and lure whatever's coming toward their nest to get it away from their nest. The next one is semi palmated plover. Beautiful little bird. Semi palmated re refers to the fact that they actually have a little bit of webbing between their toes. This bird is um, about six and a half, seven inches. So we're, we're going, notice we're going down in size. One ring around the neck, either plumage. And notice the yellowish legs. Again, big eye, short bill, typical plover look, and a forehead. These are the color of wet sand. And that gives them what we call counter shading. A predator going up over the bird would look down and see this color back, which blends in to the shore. Um, and that really helps them a lot because they are small birds. Um, the next bird, the snowy plover, is similar in size. It's about six and a half inches. But notice it has a more pale back and it prefers the drier sandy beaches. And that's where it usually nests. Partial neck ring, again, big eyes. Look at this plump body. That is your typical plover and short legs. These are protected and um, they nest on sandy beaches. They usually have this little bit darker ear patch that you can see in both plumages. So that's our snowy plover. They're really cute. And this is their nesting ground. So you can see that this back color really, again, provides counter shading in the environment so that they blend in. And I'll tell you, I've been on beaches where I pick up my binoculars and look, and I think I see, oh, you know, two or three snowy plovers, and you start looking more closely, and there might be 20 or 30 snowy plovers in the, in the, in the you know, in your binoculars. It's, they're ab absolutely amazing. Notice that most of them are banded, keeping track of them and, and banding them each year. Okay, sandpipers, much more diverse. Um, these guys, bills are usually the head length or longer. That's very typical. And they have touch sensitive bills. So they are touch feeders. They walk along probing and they're not looking, they're just probing. And when their bill touches a food item, they grab it. Their eyes are small. They're not using their eyes to find food. They're using their touch sensitive bills to find food. And there are a wide set of behaviors for these birds too. So our largest, the long-billed curlew, which most of you probably just heard a whole heck of a lot about, is a chicken sized bird actually. I, I kid people and say, you know, it's the size of a Zaki Farms chicken. 20, 26 inches in size. And of course, the identifying feature, look at that bill. How many head lengths? Okay, here's the head length, one head length, one head length, two head, whoops, two head lengths, maybe three or more head lengths on this long bill curlew. The color pattern, the beautiful markings, cinnamon, under the wings, which is quite noticeable. Um, look at this swallowing a sand crab here. Again, oh, you can even see this touch sensitive tip on this bill. See that right there? That is where the touch receptors are. Um, beautiful markings, notice gray legs. Now on the left is the long billed curlew with its bill at least three times the head length. On the right is a wimbrel, and the wimbrel is smaller 
than the curlew. It's about, oh, 15 to 19 inches. But the main characteristic, look, here's the length of the head and here's one head length, maybe at most two head lengths on the curlew. So there's a big difference in the length of the bill. Plus, as you can see, the curlew has noticeable head stripes. The curlews are also browner. And again, let's look at the length of the head and here's one head length, two head lengths for the bill. And um, they're not as common locally as the um, long-billed curlews are. Skipping, oh, I'm sorry, more pictures. I wanted to show you the head stripes better. You can really see the head stripes on all these birds and you can see the brown backs on these wimbrels. The next bird is the marble godwit, and it's bigger than a wimbrel. It's smaller than a long-billed curlew. It's about 16 to 20 inches. And notice the color patterns, buffy brown and again, some cinnamon. But probably what stands out most is this bill. And the bill is two colored, pinky orange at the base and black at the tip. And notice head depth and the bill is at least two times the head length. I wanted to point this picture out. This guy did not hurt his bill. They have the ability to open the end of their bill to grab food. When they stick their bill down as they're probing, if they catch something, they can open the tip and grab it like a little pair of pinchers. And notice these have black legs, but again, bill length at least two times the head length. Beautiful, beautiful birds. Going down in size again is the willet at um, about 14 to 17 inches in size. Very plain bird. When we see them, they're usually in basic plumage here. And I describe it as a plain gray bird. It has a gray bill, it has gray feathers, it has gray legs. Even in alternate plumage, all of that is true, except there's more markings on the feathers in the alternate plumage. But it has a very straight bill. And you can see, here's the head length, and the bill is like one and a half the head length. When I was first, I'm sorry, I'm so dry. When I was first learning these birds, I would see a bird and I think it was a willet and I shouldn't tell you this, but I would throw a rock, not at it, but toward it. Because if you can make a willet fly, it shows you the beautiful black and white W on the wings, as I said, and that's W for willet. And they usually squawk at you too. They're very noisy, squawky birds when they take off, but those black and white wings are quite noticeable. I'm sure you've all seen these. Okay, this is the supermodel of the shorebirds or what I like to call a supermodel of the shorebirds. Um, these are the yellow legs and they have yellow legs. They're the long slender supermodel. We have both greater and lesser yellow legs and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the greater is about 10 and a half to 11 inches Whereas the lesser, um, the lesser, excuse me, I did that backwards. The lesser is 10 inches and the greater is 14 inches. Um, you can see this beautiful, look at the pattern on the edge of the feathers, but this long lean look. Yellow legs tend to be solitary. Out there, one bird walking around by itself, one of each species maybe, but they are very, tall, they have a long neck, longer than, than many of the sandpipers. And that's what I think gives them that supermodel appearance. Going down in size, well, more like the lesser um, yellow legs, these are dowichers. Dowichers um, <laughs> have eye stripes. Look at these nice eye stripes. And they have quite long bills. So again, length of the head, and the bill is at least two times the length of the head. They also have yellowish green legs. 
when these birds are feeding, they feed like a sewing machine, just constant ping, 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 ping. And there's a saying that says, dowagers are down stitchers because that's the way they feed. And that's a behavior that you need to notice. And when they're feeding, their backs are flat to the water, their tails not sticking up. When they're doing their sewing machine, their back is flat. And we have two species. We have the short build and the long build. And they are quite difficult to tell apart in the field. There's some differences in the markings under the ta tail. And the other difference is the sounds that they make. The short build makes a two, 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 two sound. And the long build makes a kick, 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 kick sound. So the sounds make a difference. And I have those things written in my field guide right next to the bird to remind me of that. So I don't have to read it in the verbiage. Um, and, and I can also say short builds probably are more common just on salt than um, the long build, which will be salt and fresh water both. One of the things that's really noticeable in flight, they have this white wedge down their back. And that really gives them away because it's so different than any of our other shorebirds um, when they're flying. I'm sorry, I'm trying to check my time here. Ah. Um, so those are the dowagers. So, oh, my cat just jumped up. So dowager size comparison. So this is the dowager. You see the yellow green legs, the eye stripe and that long bill. And notice how small it is compared to the other birds. These plain gray ones, what are they? They're willets, plain gray. And then these with the two colored, uh, slightly upturned bill. These are marbled godwits, so they're a little bit bigger. And then back here with this long down curved bill is a long billed curlew. So that should give you a good idea as to the sizes we've been talking about. And remember what I said, don't worry about actual sizes. We're gonna do all comparisons, comparison of the birds you've chosen to look at compared to the birds around it. Okay, I hope that helps. <clears throat> One of the uh, very different groups of sandpipers are the turnstones. These have short squat bodies. They look like they don't even have a neck. Um, short legs, think of the leg length. Look at this leg length and compared to the body depth. And, and there is really no neck compared to the body depth. The bill is uh, shorter than the head length and the bill is actually broad at the base. These birds have very strong neck muscles and they actually use this wide base bill to turn over stones. They're looking for food. They'll turn over uh, rack, you know, seaweed on the beach. They'll turn over stones on the beach to find little isopods and amphipods, different kinds of crustaceans that they like to eat. These are black turnstones. They have black all the way down their breast, markings all the way across the breast. The alternate plumage has more white on the head. Um, and the basic plumage, that's pretty much black. In flight, they're amazing. They're just these black and white stripes just stand out like crazy when they take off. And it's really interesting because they can blend into the rock so well, you wouldn't even know they were there until they get scared off by something. And all of a sudden, this burst of black and white markings is, is visible and you didn't even know the birds were there in the first place. The other one is a ready turnstone. And <clears throat> what happened to my, you know what? I missed something back here. I'm so sorry. Here's my ready turnstone. So they're different. Ready means rusty red. They get it from the name from this back color and alternate plumage. Notice the legs on the ready turnstone are bright orangey 
bright, bright, bright orangey. And then they have black scalloping on the chest and a white belly. Um, again, like I was saying, they turn stones over, they, they get into the uh, seaweed and things on the beach and look for, look for mostly crustaceans to eat. And then here's the black turnstone again. And here's the black turnstone in flight. And then you can tell the difference here. The ready with its rusty feathers and the black, mostly all black. So now we have one of those large showy, showy shorebirds, the black oyster catcher. And who's this guy? A black turnstone. Notice the black all the way down here, uh, light orangish legs, black pretty much all over. And that gives you a size comparison too. The turnstones in size are about eight, eight to 10 inches. So much smaller than the black oyster catcher. And here's the black turnstone. You can imagine if you were a ways away, how this bird would blend in to all this algae washed up on the beach. Um, this is a willet, plain gray, plain, plain, plain. And this is a dowager. Look at the eye stripe. And here's that yellowish, very long bill. And this dowager with the eye stripe and the yellowish bill. And in this picture, you can see the yellow legs of the dowager. So there's a nice, oh, and here's another black turnstone back here. So they really do blend in well. A relative is the surf bird. And this again has that same sort of stocky look to it. And when it's just standing, it looks like it doesn't have a neck. In both the alternate plumage and the basic plumage, notice the bird is spotted all the way down to its belly. Okay, all the way down to its belly. It has yellow legs and the bottom bill here is yellow. So those are things to look for when you identify a surf bird. In flight, they have white wing bars. You see these white stripes on the wings, very noticeable. And they have white on the sides of the tail with um, a white, I mean, excuse me, a black tail tip. So that's our surf birds in flight. Next one on our list, um, about eight to nine inches in size, so we're going smaller, a little bit smaller, is the Dunlin. And um, the Dunlins in basic plumage are rather plain, markings down to the breast, dark bill, and notice the bill droops. If I were to draw a straight line here, you would see that the bill drops out below the straight line. And you can see it in this bird too. So you can be looking at a flock of mixed shorebirds and all of a sudden notice one with a drooped bill and say, oh my goodness, that's a Dunlin. They look beautiful, striking when they're um, in breeding plumage with this black belly, and beautiful rust markings. But um, most of the time, this is what you're gonna see. And the Dunlin always looks to have a humpback. They have a hunched posture. And that's very telling. That and the down curve just at the end, drooped bill is very, very telling of a Dunlin. The next one is a spotted sandpiper. And um, in the alternate plumage, it is spotted. Of course, when they're here, we're with us most of the time, they have no spots. But this is about seven and a half inches. So it's a little shorter than what we've been looking at. Usually solitary, usually one bird at a time. And the bird bobs its tail up and down, up and down, up and down. And the bird walks at the edge where the water and the land meet. That's where you'll find the bird usually. 
Um, they, they will be in freshwater streams also. You can be inland, you know, 50 miles and find a spotted sandpiper bobbing along the side of a lake or a stream. One of the other noticeable things is they have this white that goes up the shoulder, like a white shoulder wedge. And um, that's pretty noticeable, at least in basic plumage. This is the way they often look when they get here. Um, it's hard to see the wedge on the shoulder in this picture, but you can see this sort of eye stripe. And oh, I, you know what? The bill length is about the head length. I should have mentioned that before. The bill length is about the head length. And there's a hint of, of striping here around the eye, but not really. So the other thing that's noticeable is if you scare up a spotted sandpiper, they fly with really stiff, stiff, stiff wings. I mean, their wings are just like that, barely going up and down at all. Very, very stiff, not like any of the other shorebirds at all. So that's a tell also. Going down in size again to seven to eight inches, this is the sanderlings. And they're called sanderlings because they like sandy beaches. And sanderlings <clears throat> are well known to most people because these are the birds that act like they don't want to get their feet wet and run up and down the beach very quickly, staying right at the edge of the waves. But you can see sometimes they get their feet wet. Uh, Color-wise, they are clear white breast, really clear white, very crisp colors, and it's more of a gray color. Again, helps blend into the sand better. The other interesting thing about sanderlings is they only have three toes. They are missing that fourth toe. When you see them in a group, <clears throat> and I'll show you another picture in a minute, but one of the things that's usually noticeable is right here at the shoulder is a black mark, and that is on their wings. And when they fold their wings up, the underside right there is black. So you can barely make it out on this bird. I guess I see it because I know it's there. But um, these are beautiful little birds. And I know you've all seen scenes like this with the birds running up and down the beach, but black and white, crisp pattern, little black legs, three toes, and you can see the black shoulder marks on most of these birds. Here's another one. So that's our sanderling. So now we have sanderlings surrounding a Western sandpiper. And the sanderlings, like I said, are seven to eight inches. And the Western sandpiper is six to seven inches. Notice the darker face. Notice the mixing of colors on the back. There's a little, little dark bill here that's maybe the head length, dark legs. The thing that's I find really intriguing about Western sandpipers is, I'm gonna skip one more slide, is this end of the bill on the Western sandpiper. You know, when you have a candle that's just ready to drip, how it forms that little drip, like right before the drop of wax comes off, that's the way the bill of the Western sandpiper is. And remember, this is a touch sensitive bill, little eyes, touch sensitive bill. This shows you the brown colors. Look at the markings on those feathers. I'm gonna go back to this other slide. So the, these are sanderlings again, and this is the Western sandpiper. And even in this picture, look at the tip of the bill. Can you see it shining, that little drip tip on the bill of the Western Sandpiper? And those nice black legs. The other characteristic that you'll see on Westerns, is right back here, they have kind of a cinnamon rust stripe, one on each side. The rest of the feathers are kind of just browns and grays, except for right back here. 
So here's our Western sandpiper in basic plumage, which is how we see them. There's that rusty stripe. There's the droop at the end of the bill. And notice the bill is kind of thick and chunky right at the face. And again, the bill is maybe the length of the head. And then these bright black legs. And let's say here's the body depth and the leg length. It's probably close to equal, wouldn't you say? Again, thickness here, a bit of a droop there. More Western sandpipers. Again, here, look, here's that rusty, those rusty lines again on the back. And again, the thick here and the black legs. Dark face. This is a little bit more, this guy's molting. And when they fly, they have white on the sides of their tails. Look at that. And they have a dark stripe down the center of their tail. So that's a noticeable pattern for the um, Western sandpipers. I know that's hard, but they're, in most field guides, they show you all of these um, plovers and sandpipers in flight because oftentimes, you know, you're standing at the beach and they're coming in or going out or a predator comes in and scares them. So this is a thing to start looking for as you get to know the birds better. So white on the sides with a black stripe down the middle. Now, the smallest shorebird in the world. This is our least sandpiper, five to six or so inches. And notice the pointy little bill, really, really pointy little bill. Again, short, stocky bird, little eyes, typical of a sandpiper. They don't use their eyes to find food normally, they use their bill. And Lee sandpipers have yellow legs. That is really, really important to know. And they have a wash of brown across their breast, a wash of brown. So here, yellow legs, little pointy bill, yellow legs, yellow legs, little pointy bill. And notice the wash of brown on the chest. So again, that's a really typical characteristic for least sandpipers. So that's the smallest sandpiper in the entire world. And we get them in Morro Bay in the thousands and Western sandpipers in the thousands also. Fun birds, and usually they'll be mixed flocks. So you will often see Westerns and leasts side by side. So here's our Western <clears throat> with the rest on his back, the fat base here. He's got stuff clinging to his droopy end of his bill. Notice the black legs about body depth, whereas the least sandpiper, much browner. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see the pointy tip because they've got he's got sand on his bill too. But look at the wash. Look at this. Draw an arrow in your field guide pointing to that, that the least sandpiper has a wash across its chest and the Western doesn't. That's very important to know the two. So again, you see a group of shorebirds, you're gonna divide and conquer. You're gonna look at shape. You're gonna look at proportion. You're gonna look at bill length and leg length. And you're gonna to compare to head, neck, body depth, all of these things. But the thing is important, pick one bird. So who's this? You just had a speaker talking about this bird, three times the head length, the long billed curlew. What about these guys? Ooh, look, I see black, I see markings. Well, this actually is, this actually is a Western sandpiper and but you don't see the rust on him. And this is a sanderling, notice it's bigger. How about this one? Look at that bill, slightly upturned. If I drew a straight line, you could see that. So upturned, pink at the base, black at the tip, 
marbled godwit, very common shorebird. And then we got a group here. So these guys, uh, gray and white, shoulder marks, shoulder marks. So the in black legs, gray and white, black, crisp colors are sanderlings. How about this guy? See what I mean about that bill? This bill drops down at the end. And this is a dunlin. And this is the way you'll see them. You'll see a flock of shorebirds and there might be one dunlin out there in most cases. How about these guys? Well, black and white W on the wings. So these must be willets. And these birds, if you pick one bird out to look at, you'll notice the base of the bill is pink and the tip of the bill is dark. And, so, and some of these you can see better than others look slightly upturned. So these are marbled godwits. Remember, one bird at a time. Don't let the abundance of shorebirds scare you off. Pick a bird, look at it closely, look at the top, look at the underside, look at the proportions, head to bill, neck to body, body to legs, look at the habitat. And then after all of that, look at the color. But you notice color is really the last thing we talk about in most of these birds because proportions are the main thing. So I wanna thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope this helps. There are lots of other shorebirds out there and um, there's so much fun to watch. If you get a chance, come to Morro Bay. We'll go birding. <laughs> thank you. Wow, Claudia, that was amazing. Let <laughs> me tell you, there are about 180 people who are thinking they are very glad that they came to this event tonight because shorebirds are tricky and you just really helped it make it easier for me. And I think I'm, I'm going to go out there and give it a try now. I used <laughs> to just say, ah, shorebirds, you know, or just call them all sandpipers or something. But now, now you've given me a few tips to uh, help me out there. Uh, Claudia, thank you for your expertise, your years of service in so many volunteer organizations as well as educational <laughs> institutions. Really, really appreciate all of that. Well, I don't know about you. Ha has anybody been to every single one of these? How many have been to more than three? Raise your hand. Go ahead and raise your hand. How many have been to more than five? Raise your hand. How many have been to more than 10? <laughs> How many have been to all 24? Oh my gosh, we got hands all over the place. That is incredible. Go ahead and put your hands down because uh, we want to see your faces. Turn your screen on. We want to see your faces. Um, how many of you have learned something new? Did you enjoy it? Just wave your hands. Wave your hands. Did you enjoy it and, and learn something new? Oh my gosh, I did. I thought it was fantastic. And if you have, uh, if you um, really enjoyed it and would like to do that in person, consider giving a donation. That would be really awesome. We would appreciate it because we want to do this again in person next year. Again, we've got uh, 150, 151 people here right now. Look at all these faces. Go to gallery view and scroll through some of those faces. Wave to your friends. Do you see somebody? Do you see somebody you recommend and you, you, you recognize? Okay. <laughs> So uh, I'm gonna, let's see, uh, I have, uh, Anne-Marie says, thank you so much for all of these. Um, uh, e says, great festival. Thank you for the East Coast or from the East Coast. Uh, type in a message, I'll read it real quick. If you got some message, uh, you know, this is our big, uh, our big goodbye. Um, type in a little hello or, or uh, hi from wherever you're at and, and I'll do a quick little reading. Um, uh, and make those either to everyone or directly to me, Chris Cameron, uh, and then we'll read them. Uh, again, uh, bravo, says Jan Loomis. Thank you so much. Alice Smith says, amazing. Sent a note to a magazine editor for something, and then she went away. Let's see. Thanks from Arizona. Uh, Ventura says, wonderful job. Florida says, great opportunity. Um, uh, somebody just said, a great session on shorebirds. Somebody else says, Morro Bay Bird Festival rocks, which is it does. <laughs> A great birthday celebration. Wendy, Wendy Jacobson, happy birthday. Hope you're enjoying your birthday. Uh, yeah, and, and you know what? Go eat some cake. 
Um, Sedona, Arizona, we're glad to have you there. Uh, you know, you've got a great uh, bird festival there in Sedona as well. Uh, the lady from Rainbow Acres, I think, runs that. I forget her name. Uh, hi from Scotts Valley. Uh, thank you so much, says uh, Trisha. Uh, uh, Lori from uh, San Diego says hi. Somebody from Portland says hi. Anne says wonderful festival. Pat says uh, thank you so much. Uh, Don says that was beyond awesome. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you from Santa Barbara. Uh, thank you those who, who flew by the seat of your pants. Yep, that's us. We were flying by the seat of our pants the whole time. Uh, somebody says all the talks have been incredible. Thanks, Claudia. I learned a lot. Um, 15 years of pure pleasure, says Alice Smith. Uh, I come back again, make it 16. Uh, let's see, somebody, uh, uh, Laird says, thank you so much. Uh, another hello from Santa Barbara. Somebody from Newport Beach says, hey, petition to protect shorebirds at Newport Beach. Uh, uh, go ahead and send that to everyone. Uh, uh, that's uh, change.org for shorebird education. Uh, let's see, thank you. Uh, my teenager loved the festival and the rest of us learned a lot too. Hope to come to Morro Bay sometime soon. Mariah, we wanna see you and your teenager again. Uh, Linda says, thanks. And somebody from, from Canada, uh, Linda a Snowbird from Canada says, thank you. Uh, Bob and Karen from Cambria. I, I, don't, uh, I don't know, I can't see your face, but Bob and Cambria, I, Bob and Karen, I spend a lot of time in Cambria. Uh, Nicholas says, it allows us to only send to you. Yeah, just send, just send them to me, I'll read them off. Somebody from Utah, that's S. Robert. Um, uh, hey, I'm glad you came from Utah. Utah is a great place. They've got some good bird festivals out there too. Um, let's see, Alice says, this offers a chance to get everyone involved in the advantage of learning loving birds, which has been amazing. Remind everybody to make a donation. Yes, here it is, make a donation. You can, you can do it several different ways. Hey, by the way, if you like online bird festivals, there's a lady named Christy that does uh, For the Love of Birds Bird Festival. It's like 12 bucks for a whole session. You can sign up for that one too. Uh, Roy says, congratulations for pulling it off. Yep, we did pull it off. And now we're gonna go sleep for like three days straight. Uh, especially <laughs> uh, especially uh, uh, Bob, um, Bob Ravel, who's been behind the scenes making all of this happen. Uh, it's really been fun. Well, I think, you know, time's about up. I think I'm going to go have some dinner and go to sleep. I, I enjoyed seeing all of you, and it was great to great to have you here. I want to see you all in person uh, next year. Um, if you can make a donation, that'd be so awesome. Uh, we we need to pay some bills from the from the uh, the the, <laughs> the short quit, and then. Uh, and then save up some money to get something happen next time. Somebody, Natalie says, I spend a lot of time in Idaho and Montana and especially enjoyed learning about the long-billed curlew. So did I. Uh, yeah, let's talk to those hunters back there in Idaho and say, uh, make sure you're shooting the right stuff. And, and all hunters need to be shooting with no lead to keep those condors safe. And uh, again, we're going to leave, but thank you for coming. It was a blast. We love doing it. And we don't want to do this kind again. We want to be in person again. And Bonnie, yes, if you want to email me questions, go ahead. Um, uh, Cameron.cs at gmail.com. I think that's it. My mind is spinning. Cameron.cs at gmail.com is me. Uh, feel free to, uh, to send me a note. Uh, send uh, any notes you want to Morro Bay Bird Festival, and we'll do our best to make it happen. All right. Uh, I'm going to wave goodbye and go get something to eat. Go take a little nap. Uh, we'll see you again next year, everybody. Bye-bye. Recordings will be on the website tomorrow. That's right. All right. Okay, tell your friends. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>